So today we're going to be talking about major scales and how we actually create those major scales, what formulas we're going to use and what rules we're going to follow for those major scales. So the basics of the major scales for the one octave scale um, are pretty simple. Again, these are the basics for major scales one octave. So the basics are that any one octave scale will have eight notes. That's where the word octave comes from. Um, if you're thinking like about math, you have the word octagon, which means eight sides and things like that, right? So eight notes for this scale. Now notes ascend and descend in order. What that means is that notes go up and down in order. In other words, if we know the musical notes that we have, we have A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and then we go back to A. So any scale will follow that order of alphabet, of the musical alphabet, in order. So you don't skip notes, you actually go in order of those notes, whether you're going up the scale or down the scale. Notes in the scale do not repeat. Now, again, we're talking about one octave, so don't get confused. Once we add the two octave, of course, that would be different. But we're talking about the basic one octave scale, notes do not repeat. The only exception to this is the first and the last note. Whatever scale you're playing, that first and last note are going to be the same. So those are the only two notes that repeat in the entire scale. Now, major scales, uh, they follow a specific whole step and half step formula, as we call it, or pattern. Um, I like to call it formula because I like to think of music as math. Um, but again, it's very specific. If you don't follow that whole step and half step pattern or formula, you won't come out with the correct major scale. Okay, so what is the major scale formula? For purposes of this demonstration, W will stand for whole step and H will stand for half step. Again, it's important that you understand what a whole step and half step is. We'll be covering those in the next slide. But W will stand for whole step and H will have uh, be for half step. So the formula is whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. So two whole steps followed by a half step and then three whole steps followed by a half step. So it's very similar except the first part of the formula has two whole steps, then a half step, the second part has three whole steps, and then the half step. Now here we see our musical alphabet. We see that the natural notes are in the boxes. So A, B, C, D, E, F, G, those are our natural notes, no sharps, no flats. Now the outer part of the circle, we see our sharp notes. So we have A sharp in between A and B, C sharp in between C and D, and so forth. And this is on the outer part of the circle. Now on in the inner part of the circle, we have our flats. And um, we have B flat between A and B, A flat between G and A, and so forth. Remember, when we're talking about notes, as the notes go up, the sound also gets higher. That's the reason that we use the musical alphabet in a circle. I like to use a circle because as the notes go to the right, the notes will get higher or the sound, the pitch will get higher and we'll keep going around and around and it loops and vice versa. As we go to the left, the sound gets lower. So the pitch gets lower and of course the letters go down on the alphabet. I like to use the circle again because it's infinite. We can go around and around and it keeps going. Okay, I also like to think about it as a clock. It's easiest way to remember. When you're facing the clock and you're going clockwise, which is to the right, the numbers get higher. In this case, the pitch gets higher. On a clock, as you go counterclockwise or to the left, the pitch gets lower, um, just like in a clock that the numbers get lower. Okay, so let's go ahead and actually work on a scale. We're going to pick the D major scale because that's the most common. We know that D major has two sharps, which are F sharp and C sharp. We've always been told D major has two sharps, F sharp and C sharp, and now we're gonna know why. Now let's count our lines. We have those dashes 
to symbolize the eight notes that are required to go in a scale. So we have our eight notes and that will make sure that we have that one octave. Now, because we are in the key of D major, the first note and last note are going to be D. Again, whatever scale you're doing, that's the first note. D major means that the first and the last note are going to be the note D. So once we know that, we can go ahead and plug in that first and last note as the note D. Now after that, what we're going to do is we're going to add the letters, but we're going to add them all natural. Again, even though we know that we have F sharp and C sharp in this key, we're going to figure out how that pattern actually came to be. So we added all the natural notes. And now what we're going to do is that we're going to plug in our actual formula. Remember that our formula is whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. So we're going to go ahead and draw that. Now be careful not to skip notes in between because sometimes they'll skip between uh, an interval and you don't want to do that. Be very careful not to skip. So now that we have our formula plugged in, we're going to verify those steps. We actually need a whole step between D and E. Now notice that that little box will equal a whole step and that little V or um, little down mark would be a half step. Okay, so we need a whole step between D and E. Let's look at our musical alphabet. In looking at our musical alphabet, we can see that D and E are actually already a whole step. So we're not gonna do anything to change those two notes because it's already accurate. So we're just gonna put a little check mark just for purposes of knowing that we already verified that step. The next step we need is between E and F and we need a whole step. E and F are actually a half step. Notice that they're a half step. So to make a whole step, we need two halves. So we're gonna go up to the next note that's an F, which is an F sharp, and now it becomes a whole step. Remember, a sharp adds a half step, makes a note higher by a half step. So by adding that sharp to the F, we keep the letter, but then we also create a whole step. So now that we add the sharp, now the F is correct. Now we need a half step between F sharp and G. Going to our musical alphabet, if we actually verify F sharp and G, we can see that that's already a half step mark. So we're going to leave it alone and we're going to add that check mark. Now we need a whole step between G and A. In the musical alphabet, G and A are already a whole step and A and B are already a whole step. If we verify them, we can see. So we're going to leave them alone. B and C needed to be a whole step, but B and C natural are a half step. So we go up to a C sharp and now we have our whole step and we add that sharp sign and we can check it off. We need a half step between C sharp and D. And if we double check that, remember we can't change that last note, but yes, C sharp and D are a half step. So that makes our eight notes correct. That is how D major has two sharps, the F sharp and that C sharp note. That is how key signatures are made because they follow that major scale formula or major scale pattern. Now, our next scale that we're going to work on is A major. Because it's A major, our first and our last notes are going to be A. Now, in between, we're going to plug in those letters in order. This will help verify that when we're updating whole steps and half steps, we don't change that letter name. We can add sharps or flats as needed, but we won't be able to change that note name. Now, please remember that you cannot have sharps and flats in the same key signature. Now that our formula is there, we can see that we need a whole step between A and B. So we're going to go ahead and check that whole step. Now, when we look at the musical alphabet, we can see that A and B are in fact already a whole step. So we'll go back to our formula and check those off as being accurate and not needing changes. Now we need a whole step between B and C. So by checking again on our musical alphabet, we can see that B and C are in fact a half step. So we'll need to add an additional half step by going up to C sharp. Again, don't change the letter name, just add sharps or flats as needed. A sharp will add a half step. Two half steps will equal one whole step. Now, let's go back and add that sharp to our actual C and check it off as being accurate. Then we can verify that those three notes are correct. We need a half step between C sharp and D. So let's go ahead and check if C sharp and D are indeed a half step, which they are. So we won't need to be able to change anything 
um, on our formula. We'll just leave the D as is and we'll check it off. Again, don't change the letters that are already placed there. Just add sharps or flats as needed. And reminder, sharps and flats don't go in the same key. D and E need to be a whole step. D and E are already a whole step, so no changes need to be made to the note E. Let's go back and put a check on E as well and verify that it's correct. E and F, we need a whole step. So by checking the alphabet one more time, we're going to see that, in fact, E and F are actually a half step. Okay, so again, we need to add one more half step to make a whole step. Don't change the letter. We need some type of F. So what we'll do is we'll go up one more half step to the F sharp. That becomes a whole step. So we're going to go back to our formula, add a sharp where the F is, make it into an F sharp, and that will make it into a whole step, and we'll check that F sharp off. We need a whole step between F sharp and the note G. Now looking at the alphabet, again, we can see that F sharp and G are just one half step. So we'll need to add an additional half step to make it a whole step. Again, we need some type of note G, so we'll go up by going to G sharp. This will keep the note, but go up a half step. So we'll go and add the sharp to G, making it a G sharp and creating that whole step there. Now, lastly, we need a G sharp to A to be a half step, and indeed they are. So once we look at the formula, we'll be able to double check that we are in the key of A major, and we did start and end on the right notes. Again, they'll be the name of the, of the scale or key that you're doing. Now, the sharps that we had were C sharp, F sharp, and G sharp. So the key of A major has three sharps, F sharp, C sharp, and G sharp. That is how we come up with the key signatures for the keys that we play in. Again, key signatures are created by using the formulas. In this case, we're doing major key signatures, so we're using the major scale formula. That is how we come up with them. There's no randomness to it, um, no just generic decision, but using that formula to determine that key signature.